today we are going to talk about M visa. So there are you, many of you already know that there are three major visa categories for inter, international students coming to America. One is F visa, one is M visa, another one is J visa. So today we're going to talk about M visa, which is very significantly different from F visa. So many of you don't know about M visa. So I think this presentation will be very good for you. So the M visa is a non-immigrant visa category for vocational or non-academic program in the United States. So here, remember one thing, non-immigrant visas, like you know, all other uh, student visa like F or J, this is also a non-immigrant visa, but this M visa is for vocational or non-academic programs. F visa is more of a academic programs and J1 is like a more of a exchange visitor kind of program, but M is a vocational or non-academic programs. What are the criteria for um, you know, eligibility for M1 visa? You must be accepted into a US SEVP approved vocational or technical school. So remember, there are some uh, vocational or technical schools in America, they, uh, they are not SEVP approved. You must be uh, accepted. You must get admission to a SEVP approved vocational or technical school. Number two, proof of sufficient funds. So a lot of people ask me, what is a sufficient fund? What amount would be good for um, M1 visa uh, approval? So usually, uh, the, the total expense of the study, total expense of the program. So let's say just for like a rough idea, let's say $20,000 is the total cost of the you know training, uh, vocational training you're going to get under this category, plus total living expense in that area for the entire period. So I'm giving you an idea. Let's say you are coming to America to uh, get training as a pilot. And uh, the pilot school training program for the entire course is $25,000. Plus, let's say you are going to stay in New York City and the, the living expense for uh, one year or the entire uh, period of uh, education is, let's say, $20,000. So 20000 plus 25000 $45,000. You must have $45,000 in your or your immediate relative's bank account. That is a sufficient fund. Number three, non-immigrant intent, meaning that when uh, they will ask you question about your future plan in the embassy, you must say that you go back to your home country and do your job in your home country. Never tell that you want to be in America because if you express your intent to be in America after your education, that's immigrant intent and th that may deny your visa. So please remember that it is a non-immigrant visa. You must have non-immigrant intent. A lot of people ask us questions like, when I will be in America under um, M1 visa, am I eligible to get employment? The answer is yes. However, M1 visa's requirement for employment is very significantly different from F visa categories, F1 uh, visa categories. So Many of your friends may be in America under F-1 visa and their requirement for employment authorization is significantly different. There is no OPT, CPT, uh, uh, OPT extension. None of those are ap uh, applicable under M-1 visa. So let me go through this. So vocational students in America uh, in M-1 non-immigrant status may only accept employment if it is part of a practical training program. Remember, practical training program related to your field of study after they complete their course of study again after they complete your study you cannot get employment until your course of study is complete what is the process the process is you request practical training um, to your dso first you request your uh, opportunity for practical training to your dso dso recommends that yes you are eligible to apply for this then you file form i765 employment authorization to uscis remember this is not about opt opt automatically comes after f1 under m1 it does not so you have to submit form i765 to uscis then uscis will approves it and a student and you will receive a ead card OPT does not have come with EAD card sometimes, sometimes it does, but for M1, it must, uh, you must receive a EAD card. Once you have an EAD card, then DSO report to SEVP that you're, uh, you got employment card and now you're going to get employment through some company, you know, 
practical training. So this is a very specific process, which is very unlike uh, than uh, F1 or J1 categories. I want to tell some more important information about this. The dependents of M1 students have M2 status, which is very similar like F2, and are not eligible for employment authorization. M2 is not uh, eligible for employment. If you are an M1 student, you may not change to F status while you are in the United States. A lot of students, they, th they think this way, well, I'm going to America for uh, under M1, and when I'll be in M1, I'll change my status to F status, which is not possible. So please uh, keep in mind that you cannot do that. If F1 student needs, um, so it's just an extension of uh, uh, stay. Once you are in um, M1 status here in America, how you can stay your, um, extend your stay? If F1 student need more time than one year to finish their program or any relevant practical training, that student may request DSO to request an extension of a stay. Uh, then we we'll talk about the, the law under which you can uh, request for extension. So remember, you have to request your DSO to request an extension. You cannot automatically do it. Then if an M1 is not granted the extension of a stay from USCIS, the only option the student has to continue study is to depart the USA and return after receiving a new I-20 and service ID. The student must pay the I-901 service fee on the new service ID. So you can you know, apply for extension. If your extension is not granted, the, there's only one option, which is go back to your home country or any other country, apply for a new I-20, pay the service fee, and then come to America. So M1 is very restricted compared to F1 because F1 has a lot of flexibility. However, M1 has some good opportunity too. So this is the continuation of the previous slide. So how to apply for extension? M1 may only request extension in one year maximum increment at a time. You can only request for one year increment, not long time. The cumulative time of extension that can be granted to an M1 student is limited to a period of three years from the M1's original start date plus 30 days. So the total number of extension can be uh, uh, approved is only three years. Unlike F1, F1 has an unlimited time of you know, extension, but M1 has only total three. This three-year maximum limit includes extension granted due to a school transfer or reinstatement to lawful status. So no matter what you do, the total number is three. Transfer to another ACVP certified school. So a lot of time when you come to America, you may see that, oh, the school you choose is not the right school or some other reason you may want to change to another school. So there are some very uh, limited opportunity to transfer and there are some very restricted rules to apply. So please uh, follow this carefully. M1 are only here only, I highlighted this word, only eligible to transfer to another ACVP certified program within six months. Again, I highlighted it because you have to do that within six months. You cannot do after six months. Six months after arrival to pursue the same learning objective. Again, I highlighted it, same learning objective, meaning let's say you uh, came to America to uh, you know, get training as a pilot. And then you decided, oh, I don't want to be a pilot. I want to be an accountant. You cannot transfer from, uh, from a pilot training program to an accounting training program. It must be the same learning objective, meaning you have to be a pilot. Uh, if you do not want to be a pilot, you have to go, go back to your home country. So it has to be same learning objective. And they must receive approval from USCIS. I mistakenly put another <laughs> extra S. I'm sorry for that. It's USCIS by submitting a form I-539. Again, you have you cannot just you know go to another school and say, hey, I want to study here. No, you cannot do that. You have to submit form I-539 to USCIS, get it approved, and then you can transfer. So the short answer to a lot of people ask question, can I transfer to another school? The answer is yes, it must be ACVP certified. It must be within six months. It must be within the same learning objective. And you have to submit a form I-539 to USCIS. So there's a lot of restriction, but it is possible.